This is problem number 10 from page 214 in the Advanced Geometry book. This is an indirect proof. Um, specifically, the reason you can tell the best reason to approach this as an indirect proof is the fact that you have some angles that are not congruent to each other. Uh, you're trying to prove that some segments are not congruent to each other. We don't have any theorems that tell us what isn't congruent. We have theorems that tell us how to show that things are congruent, and so very often the indirect proof gives us a roundabout way to get around the fact that we don't know how to show this. So the idea of the indirect proof is quite simple. Either A is, A, B is equal, or either AB is congruent to AC, or it's not. And if I can show that they can't be congruent for some reason, then I know the other possibility has to be true. Um, and that is that they're not congruent to each other. So that's the basic concept, okay? Uh, so, first of all, you want to state that there are only two possible answers. Uh, either AB is congruent to AC, or AB is not congruent to AC. If there are more than two answers, and this process doesn't work, but in this case, that will work. Um, every indirect proof is going to start exactly the same way you make an assumption. The assumption is always the opposite of the proof statement because you haven't proved it yet, so it's open to question at this point. Um, meanwhile, the given is always set in stone. You cannot change the given. Very, very important that you understand that. Okay? So, as a result, I'm going to make my assumption. My assumption is instead that segment AB is congruent to AC. And I'm going to show that for some reason, that causes some type of problem, a contradiction. So I'm going to state that I'm assuming that segment AB is congruent to segment AC. And then I'm going to state any conclusions I can make. Now, one important thing you want to do when you make that assumption, even though we know it's not really true, you do want to go ahead and mark that in your diagram. And you need to use that labeling, even if the picture makes it look like it's not true. Again, the idea is to show a contradiction here, so your labelings are really important. So I'm assuming that AB is congruent to AC. Um, I have perpendicular segments up here. Uh, that's going to give me right angles, and of course they're going to be congruent. So I'll say something like PA is perpendicular to AB, and PA is perpendicular to AC. So angle PAB and angle PAC are congruent right angles. Again, you don't need full if-then statements for these proofs. Um, you know, you want to explain what you know and why you know it. It's a little bit more like an open response, um, more, so, most, more so than your typical full two-column proof where you're having full if-then statements. Okay. Uh, PA is congruent to PA by the reflexive property. So I can mark that congruent. And now you can see that according to the labelings, I prove these two triangles congruent by <coughs> angle side angle. So I'm going to say as a result, Triangle PAB is congruent to triangle PAC by side angle side. If the triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. So as a result, we know that angle B is congruent to angle C. Well, that's a huge problem because I was told in the given up here that angle B was not congruent to angle C. Now some of you may prefer to mark those two angles with two different labelings to show that they're not congruent. Um, if that's something that throws you off, you might not want to label those parts that are not congruent to each other. But the point is, I showed if this segment and this segment are congruent, if those right angles are congruent, and if I've got those shared sides, those two triangles are congruent by side angle side, that forces 
these two angles to be congruent, which contradicts the given, which means my assumption that AB is congruent to AC can't be true because it causes something false to happen. So I basically say that this contradicts the given. So the assumption is false. Now, um, normally you make your assumption and really what I'm showing here is a contradiction. Okay, again, most books will not actually have you label this. Um, you can or not. But every indirect proof needs that assumption. It needs the contradiction. And then you should make your conclusion. Okay, and again, very often this is all shown in one paragraph, but I break it up to, to show clearly what parts are taking place here. Uh, the conclusion is, if my assumption is false, uh, that means that this is not true, which means that this has to be. So I'll say, therefore... AB is not congruent to AC. And that ends my indirect proof.